A lot of military dogs are stuck in kennels, not just in the U.S., but overseas. Hear from our special guest this evening about how to get them back into the retirement they deserve. Hi there, this is Ann Angela Webb, the Animal Intuitive. And first off, I just want to say thank you to all of our two and four legged veterans. Uh, today is Veterans Day 2021, if you're watching this in replay. And I want to thank everyone who's joining us here tonight. If you are in the chat uh, during this uh, discussion, you can certainly ask questions, you can make comments, and I will be checking it periodically. So feel free to ask questions and, and just be involved in this discussion tonight. So that being said, um, rescuing, reuniting, rehoming, rehabilitating, and repairing uh, retired working dogs that have served mankind in some capacities is what the Mission Canine Rescue is doing. So I'm thrilled to introduce Bob Bryan, Chief Technology Officer for Mission Canine Rescue. So Bob, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be on and talk about the dogs. Yes, I'm so excited. Uh, this is just one of my favorite topics. Uh, so thrilled to be able to have this conversation tonight. So I'm just gonna make sure that our chat is open. I just want to double check that because it looks like sure. it might be. Take your time. I don't know if nobody's there. Just they might just not be showing up. If anyone's in the chat, just let me know. So they that can it always, just... they can yeah. always come back. Yeah, okay. type me a message if you're in the chat so I can see if people are there. Looks like something. We have a couple that couple that are watching. It'll pick up. Yeah. I think I just accidentally opened up a window. Hold on one second, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so I'm really excited about talking about working dogs. I I love certain breeds, and that's just part of it. So I'm like a big German Shepherd fan, and we know that isn't the only breed that that does uh, military work and police work, but I am a fan, but. So uh, let's get let's get started. Um, tell us a little bit about Mission Canine Rescue. Sure. Mission Canine Rescue is an organization that was founded back in 2013 in Houston, Texas. Uh, we bring military working dogs, contract working dogs, uh, search and rescue, police canines, uh, any dog that has worked in some capacity, we stand ready to bring them home after they've retired from any corner of the world. And to this point, since 2013, we brought home over 1,100 dogs, and we've reunited close to, I believe, 460 with former handlers. And we've touched uh, thousands with veterinary care, probably spending close to a million dollars to this point. Wow, that's considerable. Um, so how did you get involved with the organization? Maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself, too, because we want to know. Okay, well. Well, first of all, if uh, somebody would suggest, have suggested to me back in 2011 that I would be spending my time raising money and doing uh, social for a large organization rescuing dogs, I would have told you you were crazy. Uh, it was not ever anything I'd ever had on my mind. However, uh, my business is merchant services. I primarily uh, work with larger e-commerce companies. I provide their credit card processing through various banks and then I manage that relationship. I was looking for large nonprofits on Facebook that I could make an offer to where if they would share my services, I would uh, I would give them a percentage of the monthly residual income that I receive. It's basically a win-win. Uh, they chose to do it. My, uh, my now current partners chose to and uh, it went very well and I was able to uh, manage their page at that time. It was a different organization. Unfortunately, the managing or the executive director of that organization didn't believe in spending money to make money. As a result, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook advertising was refused. Uh, now I say with a smile, I raised close to $900,000 a year on Facebook. She said it would never, never bring us in a dime. It was a waste of money. And as a result, mm -hmm. uh, that organization had to fold. And I got a call in the fall of 2012 from Kristen that said, hey, this isn't going to make it. Will you co-found a new organization with me? And I didn't think twice about it. I said, sure. 
And here we are almost uh, nine years later, and we've grown from nothing to almost a million and a half dollars a year worth of work. And I could easily double it if I had the financial resources. There's never an end to what we can do. There's only an end to the money we can receive to do it. My goodness. Wow. It's quite a different angle than, yeah, than I would have expected. Um, <laughs> so talk, tell me a little bit about uh, the working dog situation. So these dogs, they go through several handlers in the course of their active duty. Could you tell me mm -hmm. about like what happens with them? Where, where do they end up? Sure. Well, first of all, these dogs train and perform like athletes all their lives. And as a result, they have problems related to their athleticism. And normally it is workability that is a precursor to their retirement. Uh, the oldest military working dog I've ever seen was a 13 year old dog. He still had drive and unfortunately he was retired. He didn't live six months and that was kind of uh, mm. disappointing. But a military working dog can have up to five different handlers in the dog's career. The uh -huh. first handler has the first choice to adopt the dog and then second, third and so forth. People ask me, well, why wouldn't the first handler just want the dog automatically when the dog retires? And the answer is, uh, it can be several different things layered upon layer. If he, uh, if he had a patrol dog, they have small children, the dog has crazy toy drive, uh, there's a potential risk to a child. You know, the dog wouldn't be intentionally biting the child. He's just going for a toy. But mm -hmm. one bite and you have a problem. Uh, some handlers may not be through with their service. They still may be overseas. Uh, and many times they will allow another handler of the dog to adopt and just say, hey, if you want to come see the dog, you know, is that OK? Absolutely. I know handlers that have uh, gone to visit each other's, uh, you know, dog that they handle multiple times. Uh, normally we see these dogs retire around nine or 10 years old from the military. Uh, from the contract dog world, uh, contract working dogs, which are trained the same and do the same job as military dogs, they're just owned by private individuals. Uh, they will often uh, retire later and they don't enjoy the medical care, unfortunately. Uh, some, most companies do the right thing, but some of the smaller ones, when they run short on cash, the dogs are the first that suffer. And we've seen some horrible cases from overseas where contractors have not done the right thing for the dogs, like getting a dog that's supposed to weigh 70 pounds back and he weighs 35 pounds. Uh, mm. just, just some scary stuff like Jeez. that. Gosh. So explain, if you could just explain a little bit, um, the contractor dog, that's okay. what, what exactly contract is? working dog called a CWD contract dogs are sometimes attached to our military. Uh, there was a group of contract working dogs that was, um, uh, run, uh, that, that were supplied by kennel in uh, North Carolina to the tactical explosive detection dog program. They're called TED dogs. Now, these dogs were used in demining work and explosive detection work. They have the same, uh, the same credential as a military working dog. However, they were owned by a private entity. The only difference between the contract dogs, con a contract working dog and a military working dog is ownership. Military working dogs are owned by the federal government. Contract working dogs, though often attached to the military, are owned by private individuals. And I hope you can't hear my neighbor's dog, Lola, barking. She's a huge Great Dane, and she's oh, going nuts. Well, she's welcome. She, I don't okay. hear her, but she is certainly welcome. That's good. Thank you, AirPods. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't hear at all. Usually you hear mine in the background, so I'm glad that that's oh, not happening. <laughs> Um, okay. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually realize that, that there were these contract dogs. That was, that's a new one to me. Okay. Yes. Con contract working dogs are the most understood, uh, undervalued working dogs on the planet. Uh, these dogs, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes they're handled by foreign handlers. In, in most cases they are, uh, most of the, most of the contract working dogs we bring back are from places like Kuwait, Jordan, Qatar. Uh, North Africa, Bosnia, Colombia, uh, where they have, you know, still uh, mines from, you know, they're, they're demining. They're actually working these dogs in little 12 by 12 yard squares all day long, you know, looking for mines or looking for bombs. But they're, 
same breeds, same everything. They just uh, have different ownership. Okay. Ooh. Um, and thank you everyone who's in the chat just saying hello and uh, commenting, yes, Veterans Day. Um, we appreciate you being here. Hello, Matt, for returning. We have some people from overseas that are regularly here. So thank you all. Um, some new people, King Rahman, I, ha I think you're new here. So thank you for joining. Um, I think you might know Uptick. I think they wanted you to know that they're watching from the TV now. I don't know if you know who that is, but <laughs> um, not sure. Not sure. Okay. Um, my partners, my partners may. I personally don't, but that doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, got it. Okay. A lot of people probably assume too that um, even that the um, that the working dogs just come back and you know that that's just the normal course of things. And you know, there's been some more coming out in the past like year two years this has started to kind of dribble in a little bit that people are desperately trying to get these dogs back to the united states so could you talk a little bit more about that like what's going on there sure. why don't these dogs just all come right. back what's okay good question all <laughs> right first of all uh the reason that they don't just automatically come back is that when the military retires a dog outside of the continental United States, they are considered excess equipment. They're not considered soldier assets, they're considered mm -hmm. equipment. Because of that, they are not eligible to take military transport. However, in 2016, then President Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act of that year, which included in it a provision that all military dogs would receive a trip home when retired overseas. To this date, it's never been put into action because the way the military got around it was they consider for an opera, uh, consider operating bases, FOBs, they consider them United States soil. And so that's how they get around it. Okay. However, we have been successful uh, in the last year in getting some dogs home on what are known as rotator flights. And uh, we've got, we've gotten, I believe we got six home from Japan back in uh, late August of this year at the military's expense. But that's been one of very, very few, uh, few occasions. Uh, normally, when a dog retires overseas, we will get a, a message from the dog's handler that's going to adopt him, you know, saying, hey, I've heard about what you do. Can you help me? And then we get in touch with the kennel master at whatever base the dog's at. Uh, we make sure that the dog is um, uh, dispositioned for retirement, and then we will raise the money uh, for the dog to come home. Now, we do have a general fund. We're never not going to get a dog home, but there are times when the general fund gets low, and I have to get out my begging bowl and say, hey, guys, you know, we need your help. You want these dogs home bad? Help us get them home. You know, there's no corporal I know or sergeant that has an extra $5,000 to get a, a dog home from Japan. Mm -hmm. They simply just don't have it. Okay. Okay. Um, and is this just, it sounds like you're very familiar. Were you, you're, did you have to learn all this or were you yourself in the military at some point? No, no, I, I, no, I did not serve. Uh, had I the opportunity to go back now, I would have served because knowing the men and women that I've had the opportunity to meet that handle these dogs, there's no way I'd miss out on that if I could do it all over again. Uh -huh. I was, I'm a crusty old boomer. I was too <laughs> young for Vietnam, but I was too old for Iraq and I didn't enlist. Uh, but if I could do it again, I would, because I have the greatest of respect for everyone that served. It's, uh, it's, it, it takes a chunk of time out of your life and not just everybody can do it. And I was too predisposed with moving forward and making money and wasn't thinking about it at the time, but yes, uh, all this knowledge has been gleaned from the nine years I've been mm -hmm. in this field and, you know, around military members, Congress, you know, things like that. Okay. Um, well, so somebody just actually made the comment, you know, uh, President Biden loves dogs. His team could help if he becomes aware. What do you think the, the level of awareness is in government in, you know, Okay. <laughs> Pretty much zero. We have mm -hmm. uh, we have the ear of a few congressmen. Uh, however, uh, the 
I have, I have to be quite honest with you. And uh, again, I, I, I will identify myself as a political, no party moderate. I'm not in love with either one of them. I try mm -hmm. to vote for the best person. And I can tell you patently that the current administration most likely will not lift a finger to enact any legislation to bring dogs home. They had the opportunity to help us with some contract working dogs that we still believe may be present at the uh, airport in Kabul mm -hmm. that, uh, were, that, that were left there. Now, these dogs weren't necessarily attached to the military, so I don't want anybody getting the idea that military working dogs were left. There, mm -hmm. there were not. Yeah. There may be some contract dogs, so we reached out and it's just like deaf ears. I honestly don't expect us to be able to get anything done with this administration, just from mm -hmm. what I've seen and the 6.2% inflation rate we're already seeing and uh, the uh, border issues that are going on currently. That's just as candid as I can be. Yeah, they're just not, it's, it's just not mm -hmm. in their priority list right now. Right, correct. Yeah, um, that's a shame. Um, do you think that there's anything that people can do to get them more involved or you think it's, are there here's, here's what, here's what, here's what the public could do. Now the military is planning again. I say planning, you know, we don't know if they're going to do it or not, but what we've been told by those that are over the various working dog branches, and we're well acquainted with these captains and majors that are over this is that they're going to start retiring dogs back in the States. Now, that will not relieve our costs because we'll still have to get them from wherever they are to wherever their handler is. But instead of a, you know, $5,000 transport, it'll be a $1,500 transport, you know, plus a hotel room or two mm -hmm. to get the dog back. So, I mean, what's the, the difference? Like, why don't they just do that now? I'm not totally sure I'm following. Because they don't have, because they, because they don't have to. Okay. It's strictly a, it's strictly a dance of the dollars. It's a dance of space on the plane and someone caring enough to say, Hey, I want that. This is what happened with Japan. We got so uh, we start up the right individual and they got on the phone and they said, I want you to get those six dogs on a flight. They did it. Okay. So uh, just uh, talk to your Congressman, write your representative. Tell them that you understand that there are still military dogs that are not being automatically sent home when retired overseas to be reunited with their handler. Mm -hmm. And that should be changed. You know, they've okay. served, they have a right to a ride home. What yeah. else they have a right to that the government does not provide them is any medical care after they're retired. Oh. In other words, thank you for, thank you for your service. Bye. Oh. Hope you're all right. That's and, uh, heartbreaking. That, it's a travesty. They should, mm -hmm. they should give medical for the life of those dogs. Yeah. Most military dogs we see uh, get some kind of cancer, especially explosive detection dogs yeah. because of, of the compounds that they're exposed to. <sighs> That's heartbreaking. We really need to take some action. Um, and, you know, we all need to take action and, ta and contact our, our representatives and, and, and get them involved. I wonder if there's any that are more concerned about this issue than others have you we just had a great one uh, ron wright who was a texas congressman unfortunately he passed away oh. a few months ago mm -hmm. um there are several that that we have but it, it starts at the local level if you mm -hmm. start the pot enough at the local level mm -hmm. and you get some attention and you get them to agree yes that needs to happen you put your finger on them and you get them to make the call you get them to send the email you get them to copy you uh basically these are public servants they work for us they yep. need to do their job. Exactly. Yep. A hundred percent. Um, and, and what is involved in getting them home? What is that whole thing? The scenario, what does it look like to get them? From? Basically we make a call to the kennel master. We find out that the dog has been what is called dispo disposition for retirement. Uh, we then, uh, make arrangements with, uh, normally it's either it's Lufthansa or KLM airlines are the only two choices for transporting large dogs home from abroad. United used to be our go-to, but they stopped uh, carrying the extra large crates and that's what most of the dogs require. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we, we broker with a, a, freight, a, a freight company that deals with uh, live animals. And then they are, and then the military, in the military in most cases will get 
the, the dog to the airport, get them on the plane, and the dog comes to us. If it's a contract working dog and we're bringing home a group of them, like we brought home as many as uh, 12 at a time from overseas, we fly over to wherever they are, and then we can bring two dogs with one person as an escort. So instead of a $20,000 flight for the dogs, it turns into, you know, nine or $10,000. But okay. basically it's, a, it's just a turn and burn, you know, go to Kuwait, go to Jordan, you know, go wherever. Mm -hmm. Okay. And somebody and from your... back. Oh, I'm sorry. Go yes. Ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. One of our, uh, some of our staff uh, will go. Kristen, mm -hmm. um, my partner and our president, uh, Louisa Kastner, our other co-founder, Kristen and Louisa, normally, uh, these are two of the most dynamic females you've ever met in your life. Uh, mm -hmm. Their work will put most shame in the amount of time that they spend caring for these dogs. In fact, I regularly have to tell them to stop, slow down, mm -hmm. because literally they'll work themselves to death. Wow. And I don't want them to do that. Sure. But uh, but they will, uh, but they'll go over and be part of the transport team. And once the dogs get back, we will have them checked out, even if it's a military dog that's had uh, all the records and everything. We still get them checked out by a vet, make sure they're decompressing okay. Uh, if they're a contract dog that doesn't have a handler to go to, they will stay at our facility in Magnolia, Texas, where we have um, room for a little over 50 dogs. We have a full-time uh, kennel staff. Uh, we have a vet tech there that helps the dogs. We monitor them. We give them enrichment. They each have a large play yard that they can go out in. Basically, we spend our time teaching them how to be just a dog and have fun. And mm -hmm. they don't have to get the bad guy. They don't have to find the bomb. Oh. And also it gives us a chance to learn their disposition, their temperament. Are mm -hmm. they dog aggressive? Are they cat aggressive? You know, are they resource guarders? Are they, are they food protective? You know, we find out all of that real quick. Right. Mm -hmm. Got sometimes it. dogs that are, sometimes dogs that are kind of sketchy, spazzy, Turning yeah. the calmest dogs after a month there. That's amazing. See, see, wow. See, I told you I talked too much. I'm going to shut up now. Let you talk. No, this is what we want to know about. This is it. Um, and I actually, I was actually trying to, I'm listening to you. And at the same time, I was going to try to bring up a, a picture of uh, Kristen just to give her a little, there she is. Whoops. Here, I'll put her over me. This is Kristen, the person that you were, I saw Kristen it gave Mauer. you the pronunciation. Ma Mauer. That's Mauer. Yes, I, I won't call her a crazy dog lady, but she gets there sometimes. <laughs> there she is. And who's this with her? Do you know the... I can't see what you're seeing. Oh, you can't see? Know. Oh, okay. Um, no, I can't see. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe Louisa a little bit shorter. Long hair, brown hair. Uh, it's <laughs> it's, it a, it's a dog. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's I'm not okay. sure. I'd have to see it. <laughs> It's a beautiful dog. Uh, maybe it may be Chuck, it may be Chucky. Chucky is uh, Chucky is her little uh, Dutch Shepherd. Is it Dutch Shepherd? It could be. I was actually going to say Belgian Malinois, but it could be a Dutch Shepherd. Maybe it is a yeah, Dutch. Yeah, she yeah she yeah she has a Dutchy name, Chucky. And I won't tell you Chucky's nickname, but if you remember the little uh, little girl that said Chucky bit me, or, or what is it? Somebody bit me, and he said something Chucky. <laughs> remember the little Australian girl? That's his nickname. <laughs> F and Chucky. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's absolutely he can gorgeous. Little, he can I mean, be a he's... little snoot sometimes. I like <laughs> he's stunning though. He really is. Um, I wonder why you can't see them. That's so annoying because I, I wanted to show you. Maybe let me see if I can fix something because I have some other pictures I wanted to show um, everybody and I wanted Bob to be able to tell us who everyone, but if he can't see, then that's not going to work. So let me just see if I can fix I see, that. I see you and I see me. That's all I see. Ah. Oh, you know what? I think I can, I think I can add another um, another window maybe, and that'll do it. Um, so sure. I'll, I'll do that in a second. But um, all right. so, um, all right. So, so we need to take some action clearly. Um, these dogs, you know, definitely the, the misconception that they're just these, you know, bloodthirsty animals that can't go and live in someone's home. That's obviously not true. You've talked about some of that. Them, some of them do require specific uh, experienced handler placement. For instance, I have a German Shepherd named Navy. Mm 
he was the first German shepherd that was that was uh, retired to us out of Canada. He's the first dog we've ever taken from Canada. And Navy's uh, handler, for whatever reason, had to leave the department. I'm not ex exactly sure why. And because he could not be adopted by the handler and they found a little defect in his uh, one of his tendons on his leg, it didn't really affect him in any way, but it would affect his workability in the future. So they kennel him and in Canada, any dog with bite training is considered a dangerous dog and they would euthanize currently. And mm -hmm. his handlers and his, the department reached out to me, two great guys from the city that he came from, good friends to this day, and said, hey, we see what you guys do. Is there any way you could take this dog? And he's a patrol dog and a drug dog. And I told them, well, sure, you know, I, we had an old Malinois that was close to his end. He was worked hard. He was a contract working dog in Kuwait. He was beaten by handlers and huh. didn't like men. We can talk about that in a minute. But, you know, the best way to get over a great dog is to get another great dog. And it was it, it just made good sense for me to adopt him because I have experience in handling dogs that have bite training. I know what to do. I know what not to do. But the worst thing that could ever happen is to get an aggressive dog with someone who is not familiar with how to handle them. Mm -hmm. it, can, it, it can be problematic. So mm -hmm. most dogs, yes, uh, will be okay with most families. Some are not okay with other dogs, though. And when we have people applying that have multi-pet households, it can be a long wait because many times dog-friendly and especially cat-friendly dogs are few and far between. Ah, now I see me and you side by side. Yeah. And you're not in black and white anymore. You look good. There we go. And is this your dog? Oh, that's Navy. That's, that's Navy. Like, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, because I had seen him, the, the name Navy. So there he is in Canada. Yeah, he's only five years old. Uh, I got him last year. I flew to Vermont. Uh, his handlers mm -hmm. brought him across, his, his owner, or not his owners, his, his officers brought him across the border. Uh, and we drove him home six days all the way back to our area all across the country. So he got, and, and he got a motel staff fired on the way home. <laughs> here's how he got it. Here's how he got him fired. Uh, he was, I always have him check rooms when I go in, I tell him seek, seek. And he runs around, goes crazy looking for drugs. Uh -huh. And he hit on the, he hit on the drawer in the cabinet between the bed. And I open the drawer, there's nothing in it. And I'm like, you know, you smoking crack dog. What's your problem? Uh -huh. And he keeps, and he keeps banging on it, jumping on it. So I, I took the drawer out, turned it over, crack pipe with a little bag of rocks by it. The little maids were coming in the room. Oh my gosh. I called the management. I said, I think you might want to come see this. <laughs> Free stay. And I think, I think the staff got fired, but uh, he's found, he's found some very interesting things for me. Uh, his, his talents, he, he, he's sharp. And he is extremely hand, handler protective. I have to be very, very careful. I literally tell people at the park, the, the quote unquote dog park where the dogs are not supposed to be off the leash or they're supposed to be on the leash. I walk through canine coming through, leash your dog. Mm. Uh, Cause I've had two dogs run up on him and I'm not going to be responsible for what happens if it happens again. Yeah, yeah. People need to keep their, people need to keep their dogs leashed. But so yes, yeah, some dogs great, but dogs like him, no special yeah, special, special. Uh, have to have experience is it hard to find appropriate yes. homes for for bike train dogs for yeah. yes uh, uh we we try to put them with uh police officers that have uh training in that we try to put them with uh, service members who have training in that or others who simply maybe work sport a lot of the shoots and sports the german shepherds you know that's that's mm -hmm. bike training you know it's uh retrieval uh they can handle these dogs we just have to make sure that it's not a green person that is not aware of what an animal is capable of in the wrong hands yeah i could see that really turning into a, a big mess um <laughs> in the wrong hands um well he is absolutely gorgeous though um and that's a pretty funny story that's he's a handful <laughs> um so some more questions I have. Um, and if anybody has questions, please feel free to put those in the, in the chat. Uh, if you're like, no, qu do. no question is off limits. Ask anything you want to. Thank you so much. I know I, I have lots of questions. So, um, so the dogs that, you know, a lot of them, I guess they do get injured, unfortunately in the line of duty, that's going to come mm -hmm. with the territory, unfortunately. So what is it like to, you know, long-term 
recovery for depends, that? Depends on the dog. Uh, most of them that we have that have any sort of injury, most of the time it's dealing with ligaments and it's strictly a matter of having the surgery, doing the rehab, you know, however long it takes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the dogs that have uh, stomach issues or cancers, that can, that, that, that can take a while. I had a Labrador retriever named military working dog Oreo, one of the best dogs I ever had. He got a very rare type of cancer. I think mm -hmm. I spent close to $30,000 treating him, but it bought him two more years. And I'd have spent twice if I could have had another two years with him. That's how good a dog he was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. People are asking for your email. Um, do you, I'm assuming, well, I'll, I'll definitely be putting that information in the description where you can reach. If, he, if, if, if anybody wants to email me directly, it's quite simple. It's bark, B-A-R-K, like woof, woof, bark at mission, K nine rescue.org. That reaches me directly. And I'll actually see if I can just put that up here. And I will have all this in the, I'll have the website for Mission Canine sure. Rescue, but it's, it's B-A-R-K. Mm -hmm. um, what was the Mission, rest? the letter K, the number nine, rescue.org. Oh, wait, barkmissioncaninerescue.org. Yeah, bark at Mission Canine Rescue. Okay, org. I thought right. something was missing. At sign. Yeah, at sign. That's okay. it. You oh. did good. There right, we go. <laughs> All right, that's the email. All righty. Um, okay. So, more questions. So, um, so the, the place that they they go when they come to texas you said that's magnolia which is like north of houston yeah okay um close to close to conroe okay um i'm sort of familiar with that area from my family my mom's from houston my family's it's hot there. and humid yeah i love it i'm I sadly don't. in new jersey <laughs> jersey <laughs> i'm freezing in new jersey all the time um, I bet you are, but it's cold now. I think it's some, to, I, yeah. Oh, it's I, getting cold. It's. I'm the lone stranger that's out on the West Coast because we have a big donor base out here. I'm from Texas, but I live in Thousand Oaks, California. It was 90 degrees today. Just insane. <laughs> Up from 60s last week. This weather out here, the whole state's crazy, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually really like Texas. We're potentially... We're going to be Southerners at some point. We're just not sure where exactly. Yeah. But uh, I lived I lived in Texas forty six years. Good times. It's changed a little bit, but uh, it's still a great place to live. Yeah, I I really like it there, and I think I somehow inherited my mother's. I don't know, like I genetically am freezing, even though you know it's not like you are genetically from Houston, but somehow I'm right cold all the time on the East Coast. I don't know how that works, but um, good. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so, okay. So we know that the way that the animals get over here, I'm, I'm, so, I'm actually surprised. I always thought it was through the military that when they did get brought over, it was like on a big, you know, military or some army green, you know, plane. So I guess not, they're coming over. Well, on actually the, the photo you may have seen showing all these dogs coming home on a big plane, that was the contractor AM canine which oh. is a very good, they're, they're very, they're, they're a stellar contractor, AMK9, uh, Von Lick Kennels. Um, oh, there's, there, there's several more. It's just a little small contractors. Okay. That's a military working dog, Attila. In fact, Attila received a nice donation from us from Discover Financial in Chicago oh. today. He is, uh, his handler is uh, JD who's up in Chicago. And this is one of the most exciting little reunions we've ever had. Um, oh. uh, he came screaming down the airport for Attila, and Attila just took off after him. But oh. uh, super cool dog. This is about a this about two years ago that was made. And th this was actually a reunion situation where yeah. they were oh, together yeah. over there. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, military working dog Attila. They worked in uh, I think I, I know actually he uh, J D works. Uh, he worked, uh, he, he was a military police officer. He was uh, responsible for guarding some of the bases with Attila here. He was not overseas. Oh, okay. Um, he's just adorable. 
Summer, he's a you, good boy. Yeah. Do you get to see these reunions? Like the uh, Kristen, uh, that's pretty much yeah. her uh, her thing. She loves to do the reunions. I've done a few. I took a dog uh, to a Marine in Minnesota a few years ago, and I've taken one here in uh, Southern California. But most of the time, Kristen and Louisa uh, do the reunions. They, they, they love that. They like the contract, contact with the soldiers. I just make sure I keep all the gears greased and turning and that there's not too much month at the end of the money. <laughs> it must be great, though, to get to, to get to It is. I, as I said, I would, I, I, had I have known how great these people were, I would have enlisted back when I was of age to do it because that's just how much of, um, of a plus I can see to your skill set would be to have, you know, been able to work with some of these dogs. Is this the, um, no, this, this wouldn't be what you were referring to with the plane. This is a helicopter. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a bunch of Marines. I'm not sure exactly where all that is. Uh, okay. But but most most of the dog handlers we do work with are Marines. There are a few Navy and Army handlers, but I would say the majority are United States Marines that okay. we work with. And and also, if anybody <laughs> don't leave us right now and go, it'll it'll mess up the show and algorithm. But at the end of this, go watch John McWilliams. I did an interview with him <laughs> a long time ago on this show, and I'll put the card at the end for you to link to it. But he was a, a dog trainer and handler in the military, and he did a great interview. Yeah. And, so, here's what I, and here's where I get to help you. I get to say, hey, if you like this segment, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe. Thank you video. so much. I actually didn't <laughs> say that yet, and so I really appreciate you saying that. We finally crossed over 1,000 recently, so we're trying to keep going. Oh, sweet. So. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Build that channel. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, and then we have, let's see, we have, this must be one of the, I don't know if this was a reunited. Yes, yes, it was, it, it, it was a reunion. I can't remember the pup's name, but that was about a year and a half ago. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. So sweet. I believe that's Jason, I believe that's Jason Robinson. I did yeah. not get a chance to meet him personally. It says Robinson on his um, yeah. uniform, so yeah. probably then, yeah. Um, so sweet. Look how happy. I mean, it, I can't mm -hmm. even imagine having to leave your dog overseas. Oh, and, and they and they can't either. They describe the reunion as one of the most positive things in their lives because they got back something that was a part of them that was oh, stripped away. Absolutely. Oh, I can't imagine. Well, the military tells the handlers when they go through handler school, don't fall in love with your dog. Uh, but how? <laughs> we all we all know that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, the, I actually, my father, um, I'm not like saying this because I'm having a stroke on air. My father was in World War II. He, I was a late in life baby. And <laughs> he, um, one of the only times I ever saw him cry, which I can count on like a couple fingers, he... Um, in World War II, he connected with this dog um, overseas, and he fell in love with it and then had to leave it behind. And when he talked about this in his, this was in like his later life when his, his mind was going, he, he, would, he cried about it. And even my best friend who was like, I've never seen your father cry. Never I had to I had to give up a dog under inopportune circumstances back in the uh, 80s and it still haunts me to this day. I can't imagine. Oh gosh. That's just I'm so sorry. That's really That God. happens. Yeah. Lessons learned. Oh. Very very traumatic, I'm sure. Um so who else do we have here? We have this beautiful Yes, that was one of our Navy Navy corpsmen. He was okay. a uh, naval uh, police officer. That was about uh, was about four years ago. Okay, and I guess they got. I, did they get... I don't remember the dog's name. I'm sorry. Okay. He was he. They were reunited. Here. Leo. Yeah. His name's Leo. Yeah. yeah Leo. Some of these okay. pictures had little names with them. So these dogs Good. are stunning. They're just the most beautiful. The the predominant breeds that you'll find used in the working dog world these days, predominantly the Belgian Malinois, which you just were looking at there, 
German Shepherd uh, would be a close second, uh, then Dutch Shepherds. The Malinois and the Dutches are, are lighter, they're faster than the German Shepherds, and uh, they, the Malinois has more bite strength than the German Shepherd, but the German Shepherd has a little bit more uh, bulk to him. They also use uh, Springer Spaniels, and they use uh, German Short-Haired Pointers. These are mostly used by uh, TSA. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Tell me the smallest breed of military working dog and what it's used for. Oh, geez. Take a guess. Chihuahua? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. We're, to, we're, we're, we're talking uh, li- a little, little, little tiny, tiny Jack Russell Terrier. Oh. What do, you think the Jack, what do you think the Jack Russell Terrier does? I mean, they're so, they're so smart, but they're also so energetic. He's, he searches for drugs on submarines oh. because of tight, tight, cramped places. Wow. When the jack comes on board, sailors get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you never think anybody's of it. Got, if, if anybody's got weed, he's going to find it. Yeah, you don't think they're being you, you know, utilized in that way. No, they are. They're or one they're... of the smallest working dogs around, <laughs> and they're pretty sh- and they got pretty good nose. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Oh, that's that's Kristen and Chucky. Yeah, that's Chucky. Chucky, he is stunning. Look at those eyes, so intense. Um, and then okay, so this is oh, look at this guy. That's Anubis. That's my dog. That's the one I took. That's my Malinois oh. that served in Kuwait. He would not. Um, that was at my home in Houston at the time. He would not release his toy because he's toy crazy. And there's three ways to get a toy away from a dog that won't release. You either give them a treat, which is what we do or you beat them or choke them out. In this case, he was beaten and choked. Uh, when he mm-hmm. came to the United States, he literally peed himself and, and, and said it, he was terrified. He Aww. quivered. We just, we just lost a beautiful dog named military working dog, Nora, one of the best dogs in the world. And my partners called up, said, I need your help with this dog. I'm like, are you crazy? I just, uh, you know, please, please, please. Mm-hmm. Well, just for temporary. Well, there's no such thing as temporary. Everybody, everybody says temporary, but yeah. He only, he hated men. Uh, he wouldn't mm-hmm. bite me, but he was scared to death of me. And the entire time that we had him in our home, he maybe sought out affection from me three or four times mm-hmm. ever. That's how broken he was from the experience mm-hmm. he had with foreigners that did not respect the work these dogs do. Oh. And we're talking, and we're talking the, let's just call them the hotter climates. Yeah. And leave it at that. Look at him. They do, they do not respect dogs. They, tr- they hate them. He, and he is he not an American breed? He's I mean not an, no that's a, no no that's pure that's purebred uh, Belgian Malinois. He was oh, trained he? Uh, trained trained in Louisiana. Yep. Wow, he looks like so unique. Looks... Yeah, he's unique. He was a he's a big mal. He's big. Okay. He passed away about two years ago. Oh my gosh, you know it's funny when I open this picture up when I because I. You, you gave me access to all these pictures. When I opened it, I yes. thought it was a statue at first. I was looking at it and I was like, is this yeah. a, a statue? <laughs> he's stunning. Look at that. Well, you notice that he's got his tail between his legs? Yeah. That's because I was taking his picture and he was terrified of me. Oh, poor little guy. Oh, he's beautiful. Well, God bless He was a contract you. working dog. He served in Kuwait. He served with a contract company that couldn't pay their handlers that were foreigners so they took the foreign handlers passports threatened to burn them and uh they killed a bunch of dogs as a show and uh, this was on the there, there there was there was coverage on this and when we found out about this we could never let anything happen like this again so we actually well everybody else was damning this contractor and rest assured they deserved it uh i, I hope they never get another dog again but we mm-hmm. took the high road and said hey you let us work it out where we take these dogs and we'll make you look better. And Mm -hmm. they agreed and they're gone, done now. Uh, but you're talking about some absolute trash that the way they handle those dogs, it just, it makes me angry. Yeah. Well, on that note, have you, can you tell us about any recent success stories maybe to, Oh, lots of success stories. Uh, we brought, um, we brought we brought home multiple dogs from uh, that AM Canine has placed with us that were bomb dogs uh, over in Afghanistan this year. Uh, we've had several police canines come to us from 
many corners of the country. We just got a real cool um, yellow lab named Max, who is a drug dog in Miles, Montana. And he's down decompressing at the ranch if anybody's uh, interested in him. Oh, okay. He'll be available for adoption in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. no, there's, no, there's always, there's very few horror stories. There's always more good stories. But people need to be aware of the horrors so they just don't automatically think that, oh, these, because uh, what I get, uh, I manage our Facebook page. We have 115 organically grown, very engaged users, but we always have somebody on there and we're asking for a transport that says these dogs are always brought home. You know, they, they know, and yet they know nothing and it takes people away from giving. So education is, is a big part of this. Okay. Um, other than that, what else do you think is really important that people don't understand that you think people should know what's about working dogs in general or, or, what? or just, yeah about all the anything that we haven't touched on that you think would be important most of the dogs when they're older they're going to have more medical problems again as we've mentioned because they uh they worked they were worked and trained as like athletes uh we have um you, uh, some of them will require some special food. Some of them have allergies from being over in some of the countries where they were. Most of the time, that's manageable. Mm -hmm. We see some with a condition called panis, which is a uh, eye problem that may require some special drops. And this is from uh, sun exposure. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is, is we just uh, is, is we just make sure that when we get these dogs, that they have every opportunity to become the best dog that they can possibly be. Yeah. Do you, when people adopt them, um, do, do you like follow them or is there some sort of, um... Oh yes, 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 yes. Yes. All of our, uh, when, when somebody applies for adoption and the first thing most people are going to ask me is why don't you have any pictures of your dogs on your website? And here's the reason the dog that everybody wants to adopt, they see in the picture will be the worst fit for their family. So what we do is we have an application process. If you visit our website, you can find it under the adoption menu. It lists all the criteria, all the parameters of, of our adoption process. And then we evaluate each adopter separately. We do background checks. Uh, basically, we, we want to make sure that, you know, these dogs aren't going to be used for fighting, that they're not, these, these dogs are never adopted for the purposes of protection. Mm -hmm. You know, hi, I'm, 70 years old, I want a dog to protect me. Well, I'm sorry, do you, would you really want to ask an 80 year old man to come and protect you? Because you know, seven dog years, uh, seven human years, one dog year, you get a 10 year old dog, that's the equivalent of, you know, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. Their protection days are over. Uh, they're also, they also cannot be certified as service or emotional support animals because many of these dogs have PTSD. And because of that, they cannot receive any national certification. If you have a true need for a real service dog, a dog that will actually perform a needed task uh, for a disabled person, seek out a young dog specifically trained for that very noble purpose. An old dog that's been trained for bombs is not going to be your service dog. They're not going to be your therapy dog. Mm -hmm. They need therapy. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I wish I was near your uh, facility. I could volunteer my massage and acupressure. And I'll tell you what, acupressure has been great for our dogs. We also, uh, I've also had incredible results with lower power cold lasers. Uh, they yep. just do mm -hmm. wonderful work for joint uh, problems. Anubis was yep. uh, the mal you just showed. We used laser on him daily and it really helped his uh, movement yeah the lasers are incredible you know we actually we got our insurance to pay for a laser for my cat mm -hmm. so nice. I was able to obtain one that i can use in my work and we use it with my german shepherd who had had an injury and they did a video about how much it's helped him right They're really incredible if people if you have animals with injuries um see if you have a vet near you that uses cold laser because they're they do really incredible incredible stuff um you can you can you can pick some of them up uh that are real good online uh, now they're not going to be vet grade because right. normal pe yeah. people can't get the veterinary grade lasers they're upwards of ten thousand dollars but there's yeah, some exactly. units that are fifteen hundred two thousand dollars that are well worth the investment if you 
want your dog to have the longest and most comfortable life possible. And please, that's not a guilt trip for anybody that, that can't afford that. But I will, will tell you that with our dogs, we want to make sure that when these dogs need to go to the vet and have preventative checkups that they don't hear, we're sorry, boy, we just can't afford it. You know, have the resources to care for the dog that you wish to adopt or please don't apply. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if this is, um, is Mackenzie Scott a represent? It says, um, how about some people call Mackenzie Scott? Am I being not knowing enough about politics? I don't know who that is. I don't know. I don't know Mackenzie you Scott don't either. Okay. Somebody's mm -hmm. just mentioning that person. I'm not sure who that is, but let us Maybe know. Maybe somebody that's... in the government. Yeah. You that's know, from... could be somebody good. I encourage anybody that could help to contact that person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let's see what else we have. We have, um, <laughs> oh, this, wait, this is, uh, we're not seeing the dog here. There we go. <laughs> if I can get us. Remember. There's a cutie. There we go. Okay. So who Malinois. is this? You know this one? I don't, is? I don't, I don't know. Levito with the handler. Levito. I guess this was. Oh, that's, Levito's. yeah, that's one of the ones Kristen did. Yeah. Okay. Look at these dogs. Look at them. They're so sweet. Oh. Um, and then I think we said Enzo. Did we show Enzo? Oh, yeah. CWD that's... Enzo. Yeah, that's that's Enzo. Yeah. I remember Enzo. I don't know why you're down there and I'm up here. I love these these systems. I don't know what just happened, but <laughs> um, there we go. Enzo. No, wait. We showed Enzo before. I'm trying to figure out who he no. was. No. Okay. He's so cute. He reminds me of my dog. That's in, I believe that's in Iraq. Yeah, he looks like he's not here. There's a lot of sand. It doesn't right. look like Florida either. <laughs> He's Sandbox. just telling himself. Uh, and then I think we showed. Yeah, Kuwait. Yeah, that's uh, some of the Marines at Kuwait, the base there. Okay. And who else? Mick and Matt. Yeah, that's, uh, I would say that's our most famous personality right there. Um, Matt Foster, he's, uh, he's a police officer up in Colorado now. That is military working dog Mick, his bomb dog. Uh, they served in Afghanistan. Uh, Mick found numerous uh, IEDs. He's responsible for saving plenty of lives. Mick is now probably 12, 13. He's getting old. He's getting slow, but he's still around. He's a good Aww. boy. <laughs> and he's a he looks like a Labrador, right? It's a little hard to see. He's a he's a black he's a black, he's a black lab. Lab, okay. American Labrador Retriever. The English labs are like my old dog Oreo or a little bit uh, bigger. Yeah, there's another one. I remember that one. That was about 2015. You can see what the labs do when they get older. They get to gray. Now, was this a situation where this was just a, was this a soldier? Reunion. Or was this a... Yes, yes. It oh, was, was Army. Army. Reunion. I'm not oh. sure what the dog's name was, but yes, they, they were reunited. Any of these that you Blue. see at an airport were, were a reunion. Yes. Okay. MWD blue, correct? Blue, yeah. This is blue. Okay. Look how happy. I mean, it must be just unbelievable when these dogs see their. Well, we've seen the videos. Everyone loves them. Yeah. Sometimes they don't recognize them at first, but then they catch the scent and they go nuts. Yeah. It's really it, it's it's a beautiful thing to watch. Ugh. Who else do we have? And then we have another helicopter. Oops, that's really tiny. Yeah, I'm not sure. That looks sure like my dog cane. Uh, this is, uh, well, it just says up a bag. Oh, maybe. I don't know what that means. That might but... just be one of our photo op photos. I yeah. have no idea who that he's, is. He's up on his helicopter. Wow. Um, did somebody just shoot down or somebody chat asking a question? I have all these like windows open here. Uh, oh, Mackenzie Scott is a huge. Philanthropy's ex-wife of Jeff Bezos, billionaire. She gives. Oh, us oh, Mackenzie Scott, female. Okay, I'm thinking male. Now I know who they're That's talking about. That's what I about. thought too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So she gives away money. Okay. I'm for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Some people people might be interested to know that uh, we, out of a dollar given to us, that we use 91 cents for the work. People will ask me, what do you do with the other nine cents? I take the nine cents and I raise another 91 cents. 
that's what I do with it. So 91% spin emission is great. Uh, that is, um, that's Mazzy and the picture, CWD Mazzy in the back. And I believe that is Jelly in the J-E-L-I -E in the front. Mazzy has a statue dedicated to him in Utah. And unfortunately he passed away just a few months ago. Great dog. I had the privilege of having him in my home right after he came from Kuwait back in 2015. Oh, how come he has a statue? Because uh, his 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 uh, adopters loved him so much. I think it's up in Layton, Utah. It's a war dog memorial up there. There's also one in uh, Denver. But no, they just uh, they wanted to honor the dogs. And some of our donors are that passionate that they uh, would raise money and commission this type of, of work. Okay. All right. Um, that's really nice. And then we have this Rambo. Rambo, yes. I don't <laughs> know Rambo's history, but I do remember him. Golden color Malinois, a little bit of a shepherd in him, I'll bet. So when you have these dogs, so, I mean, you, you, I, you, I do think you touched on this a little bit, and I'm sorry if I'm kind of having you repeat yourself, but when you adopt one... Care. Other other than the situation where it's a dog that is, you know, more of the, the bite issues, but they're just, you know, kind of regular. But do they need a lot of extra exercise and work to do? Yes, we want. OK, first of all, when we adopt our dogs out, if you want to keep your dog outside, don't adopt. Don't adopt a military dog. These dogs need to live in the house. They need to be part of the family. Now, that doesn't mean they can't ever stay in the backyard for an hour when you go. But that doesn't need to be their life. Uh, they need lots of attention. They need lots of stimulation. All of these dogs have insane toy drive. They love to play. For instance, Navy, I can't pet him unless he goes and gets his stupid ball and puts it in his mouth and growls at me while I do it. <laughs> he just, uh, that's his thing. He has to have a toy or he doesn't, or he thinks he has to have it to receive affection. Wow. Only when he's only when he's half asleep, he doesn't care. Oh but to God. try to pet him in the morning, no, he's got to run and get the ball. He has to have the ball to get the affection. Yeah, That's yeah. The dogs need lots of stimulation. Okay. Uh, they need. Uh, I walk him uh, close to three miles a day. Wow. Okay. Somebody takes him to play in the I take him to play in the morning before I go to my office. If I go in that day, and uh, they just need lots of time. They need lots of attention and treats. Don't forget treats. Don't forget treats. No, no, no. <laughs> definitely do not forget treats ever. Um, and I'm just seeing if there's anybody we missed here. Canine. Oh, is this something that you all sell for? Oh, that is that is Cameron the Camo Gator. <laughs> that is manufactured by our good friends at the pet toy company called Zippy Paws. Um, they're in Chino Hills in Orange County, and they give a dollar to us off of every one of those toys that is sold. And I met them about three, this will be their third year of giving to us. And last year, sales from that little toy alone got us a check for $81,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, Cam that's Cameron the Camo Gator. Okay, so if people wanted one of those, would they just look up Zippy Paws? Like Zippy Paws. Zippy Paws. Zippy Paws. Zippy Paws dot com. Okay. And and listen, these little toys are tough, and this oh, is that's one of their. I mean. Yeah. And that's one of their product. Now, a working dog's going to tear this toy up in five minutes, but this <laughs> is this is fine for your smaller dogs, things like that, not oh, okay. huge chewers. It does have a little squeaky in it. And uh, it, it kind of makes a <clears throat> noise, and the dogs like dog, they call it. They call them grunters, literally. I have one around here somewhere. I don't know. I, can, I don't know where it is. It's not inside, or I'd grab it and let you listen to it. But uh, they're uh, they're in good shape. So maybe not my German Shepherd. Shepherd, my forty. No, if you're gonna tear it to mix. pieces. No, just somebody wants to play. You're fine. Okay. Um. All right. Well, he's cute. And they love the squeakies, most of them. Oh, yeah. Love that squeaky sound. All right. Now, I'm seeing if I, I hope I didn't leave anybody. Oh, you know what? I really wanted to show this because this looked like a very happy. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is. Reunion. The dog. That was last year. That was actually during 
uh, uh, during COVID. That reunion happened here in the LA area. And uh, you, you've you never seen a happier dog in Handler. I mean, you can just see, yeah. look at the joy. Look at, look at that. And I have... And a, lot of, and a lot of people ask why the dogs have their tails docked like that. Military dogs tend to spin a lot in kennels. And when they do, they can whack their tail and they can get tail trip trauma. And if they do it long enough, uh, sometimes they have to have an amputation. Oh, so that, but so this would, this something like that happens after their service or do they do that? For no, them? this happened with, this happened in the service. I mean, this dog had, had, had to have her tail docked because she injured it in the kennel. Oh, okay. Cause, cause they spin and then they okay. spin, you know, they bang, 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 bang the wire. Yeah. Okay. And after a while, you know, it takes its toll. It says this is Jake and Iskra reunion. Iskra. Yes. Iskra. MWD Iskra. Yeah, this looks like a very Beautiful happy. Girl. Oh yeah. This guy looks thrilled. Like just absolutely. He is. Super guy. Oh. Amazing. The work you all are doing is just incredible. Um, if people wanted to do more to support your organization, how can they do that? They can go to your website, I assume, and there's... Yes, our website. Uh, they can donate on Facebook if they want to. The most important thing they need to know is that we spend our money where it needs to be spent. When we travel, I travel coach or I drive. Nobody flies first class. Nobody stays in five-star hotels. Most of the transport crews sleep in the vehicles when they take the dogs different places. Uh, nobody, uh, our president is paid a uh, $60,000 a year salary. She works 80, uh, 80 hours plus a week. It's not nearly enough, but unfortunately, such is the nature of the nonprofit world and that it doesn't pay right. as competitive a salary and the nature of a nonprofit sure. is to have its hands stuck out. Yeah. <laughs> because if uh, we, you know, we depend on the public yeah. and the public's love of our work to continue our work. I can tell you that Many times there can be too much month at the end of the money, and we're striving over the next two years to double our budget because if we double our budget, we will be able to do more planning for the future and we won't get into situations. The last thing we ever want to do is say no. However, right now for at least two weeks, transports are paused because we have a $40,000 vet bill that's due in Houston. Now, do we have the money to pay the vet bill? Absolutely, we have it but it severely impacts our ability to transport. So we want people to care as much about keeping the dogs healthy as they are to get them home. Because if you're not gonna care for them, they can wait a little bit, but we don't want them to wait. So we push, <coughs> excuse me, we, we push as much as we can. Uh, I, I will never use guilt. I will never use fear. I'll never say, oh, this dog's gonna be euthanized overseas if you don't bring this dog home, no. It's just like they're going to have to be there a little more than they have to. And one other thing that's very critical that your uh, fans can talk to your representatives about is a very, un, in my opinion, illegal and unconstitutional CDC action that's banning the importation of dogs from 100 companies, countries for fear of rabies. This happened in the summer. And what's oh, interesting yeah. is that, cat, that yeah. cats are a bigger rabies carrier, but cats aren't included under this van. And that brings up a big question mark, why? Well, the answer is that people believe it's being politicized and pushed by purebred breeders in the United States to keep the feral dogs that the soldiers have adopted out and push more pure purebreds. However, every working dog has a current health certificate. They have current vaccinations or rabies titers. There is no reason a working dog should be uh, barred from coming in as as it is right now we raised money to get 10 homes dog, 10 dogs home from turkey and missed the deadline by a day the turkish ministry goofed up and those dogs are stuck there mm -hmm. we will now have to send them to a neutral country uh believe it or not bosnia is where they're going where it's not so hot where they can decompress stay there then the dogs will go to another country and then they will oh come to the united states so it's going to cost us about four times what it should, but uh, it's a way to save four dogs. Say thank you, CDC. The CDC makes lots of unusual uh, decisions, and I'll just, uh, I won't even touch that.
as you know what I'm talking about, and I'm just going to leave it there. Sure, yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. They make lots of unusual. Lots mm -hmm. of unusual. For a fact. Yeah. Um, so that's missioncaninerescue.org. Correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I had put up or if they can just Or if they can just remember missioncanine.org or .com, it'll all, it'll all forward to the main website. Had we okay. to do it all over again, we would just stuck with Mission Canine because we're much more than a rescue. And people don't often understand that. And so we're trying to rebrand as just Mission Canine, but uh, all our, well, we're at the top of Google and everything for Mission Canine Rescue, so right. I'm not touching that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, You're all right. I got a little tickle <laughs> in my throat, too. All good. Uh, yeah, I had heard about that this summer with the, that whole weird, ridiculous thing with the rabies thing. It is. It's nuts, um, and it's it, it's yeah. it's it's an overreach, and it's uh it's a horrible thing to do to working dogs that have served. Yeah. And I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, and what a waste of money too. If that's what they're, you know, hundred percent. You want to make it about money? There you go. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Um. So, yeah, I had put up dot com before, but it looks like it's dot org, right? I just like quickly googled yeah. it. On my phone, it was Correct. actually dot org. Okay, um, it'd, it'd get there if you put the dot com, but that's the direct path. Yeah, and I'll have the link in the description too, so people can go down there and Thank get you. that too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, is there anything that we didn't touch on that I didn't ask about, or you know, anything that you feel like is important to mention, or you want people to do, or anything? That... Honestly, I think you covered it all. I mean. Okay. Uh, we can we are unlimited with the work we can do with the proper funding and i'll just leave it at that yeah yep absolutely we can we can do all the work that people can fund us to do and right now i know we could be doing 50 percent more that we're having to wait on just because it's the it dance of the dollars everybody wants your money and unfortunately that's the nature of the beast but we greatly appreciate the opportunity to be on the program. I hope you get lots of subscribers, lots of likes, and anyone that watches this now or after the fact in your archives, feel free to reach out to us. We're not going anywhere. We'll be here. Uh, we are a national 501c3, uh, so any donation that people make is 100% tax deductible, but as any, always ask your accountant. I'm not an accountant. I do not provide tax advice. <laughs> Well, I'm just thrilled that you, you've been able to share what you have tonight. This is wonderful. These dogs are wonderful. Your organization's wonderful. Um, you know, please give Kristen our best too. And, and you said her partner too. She has someone else who travels with her. So please. Yes. That's, uh, that's our other co-founder, Louisa Kastner. Awesome. Okay. Louisa Kastner is a retired army veterinary technician. Oh, her task, she's, okay. she's responsible for all the she helps the transport. She does all the medical. She does all the microchipping, oh, all that kind of cool. stuff. Cool. Okay. And that's all done out of... Uh... She's in San Antonio. In San Antonio. Kristen's oh, okay. in Houston. And I'm out here in Thousand Oaks. I may be moving to Montana. I'm... California's turned out to be real interesting. And again, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> um, interesting. Wow. Okay, cool. I have a lot of family in San Antonio, too. That was our first destination if we did move right. to Texas. So I love San Antonio. It's so, a good place, a little hot, but uh, I like it. Yeah, I'll take it. So thank you so much and please stay in touch and we'll, um, you know, please follow up everyone and check out their website and um, spread the word and share this and, you know, let people know about Mission Canine Rescue. Um, if you have questions, don't be shy, email me. Great, thank you everybody. Have a wonderful Again. night. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.